Hi, it's Jess here from Now Jess Creates. Thank you for joining me today. So I am going to bring you a quick tip on making document digitals look a little bit more realistic. Now I have just recently released um, some kits using um, antique documents. Um, they're over on my Kofi site. I'll link down below so you've got the antique document so in this kit i've got some i've got it written there i've got 24 document pages five mini document pages three collage sheets uh three and four backgrounds so we've got ignore the back of that so it, we've got um um, so yeah, so I've done some backgrounds to, to go to go with them if you wanted to print them um, with something on the back. But these are sort of like the documents, the kind of size um, they would be. I've done some collage sheets. I shrunk them down so you've got little bits, but you've got you've got these things. And if you want to use them as a piece of ephemera um, in in your journal, then I always think it's nice to make them look. Um, as, as authentic as possible. You can do that and print something on the back. This is printed on ordinary copier paper, um, which is quite thin and I like them on thin things, um, on thin paper because they tend to be on thin paper. I'm just, I've missed a few pages there. Um, I have got a video um, showing everything. Some of these are repeated now and they're just shrunk down a little bit and then I've shrunk them down um, a bit more because I know that some people struggle to print multiple pages for per page so done it for you these would be nice journaling cards print them on card put a background on them and um, they'd, they'd be super so this is what I'm going to be using today but I just thought I'd give you a quick flip you haven't got all the pages in this because I've been playing with it for another video which may or may not have already been out so I made journal pages out of some of them so you've got 13 journal pages uh, 19 ephemera pages and two backgrounds so i've done them so you've got these are what i'm calling the journal pages and some of them are this way on and uh, do fast forward if you've um, already seen these bits um rach from Rachel Bella Crafts is um, using this kit in conjunction with her shabby blue so she'll be bringing videos on that um, I might do similar myself because it did look so nice when she showed it so there we've got our our, our ephemera um, to go with it um, as well um, for you lots of different envelopes some with collage sheets some with um, just documents different different styles um, of envelopes there and these have all got little lines around them so if you've got a scan and cut they do work I didn't try it because I ran out of time when I was doing this but Rach shared with me that um, um, it did it cut lovely on the scan and cut so there is there's a line round all of these so I've done them and I've done them smaller and then you've got page of incy bincy bincy little ones great for clusters there's also um, a freebie kit um, as well I know lots of people have already got the freebie so you've got a collage sheet there and then you've got um, a document sheet and then you've got some some smaller documents and if you're a monthly subscriber to my Kofi um, there's a little kit there just for you and these are documents that don't appear in and journal pages that don't appear in the other kits. There might be something of a different size in another kit and there you've got some um, ephemera and little little tags that's for you and a background sheet. So that's for monthly supporters. So you could become a monthly supporter and get this. Um, uh, if if you want so we are going to do um some of the documents so um obviously i'm going to print them again um i just printed these like as test sheets on um copier paper um so that i didn't normally i would print things on either card 
200 GSM card or 120 GSM um, presentation paper. But this was just to check that they were all all right. But for documents, I like to print them on different paper. So the paper I um, use, um, I got different types of paper. So I've got this. It's called layout paper. It's very thin. It's 50 GSM um, and um, I've obviously done something with this one. It's a misprint. So it's really thin. You can see, maybe, if you put it up to light, you can kind of see your hand through it. But you can see there when it's on the pad front, you can see through it. Um, so and it's nice and thin. And this is quite good, I find, for um, printing documents on it was somebody was watching a, a video of me doing something i think it was when i was making like faux glassine and i was adding um wax to it and ironing it on and sue suggested um somebody suggested this paper so i got it the other paper i use which i can't find is newsprint paper so you can buy newsprint paper in um pads um and that's really good to use as well um you can use tracing paper that gives you a complete this is also 50 gsm um but it's tracing paper so it's completely um translucent and i always think that gives a nice um something different so it's like vellum but it's thinner um i've also got tracing paper that's a bit thicker um this is more more like vellum and it's got this um, detail in it but it's much much thicker i'd say this is over 100 gsm might even be 120 this um so i got that the other thing that i sometimes print on is parchment paper especially if it's so some very old documents that i've got which i haven't actually included in this kit because i have the original documents and i'm still working on what to do with them um and they are printed on you know like parchment um so i would print those on sheets like this and the other thing i've got which i was lucky enough to get off facebook is um this is um like what architectures use now what did she call it draftsman paper i think it is so they feel like drawing up plans so it's white on the one side and it's this sort of like pinky color on the opposite side so what i do is print on this white side so the back side's got this color on it which sort of gives it a sort of a really old look so when i was making my swaps for the rich and bella retreat this is this is what i used um, it is a similar weight. It was in a big roll, massive, huge, um, about four foot long. Um, and um, so I've sort of cut them down roughly to be like a piece of A4. Um, but it is very similar in weight and feel to this layout paper. It just isn't a different colour. So these are really thin, as is the tracing paper. So I'm going to um, tell you what, what I do. So I, I use an old scrap of paper. So I have to print these every time I replace my ink. You get to print these. Um, I usually reuse it, so I make sure I print both sides. Um, and then I use it for this. I didn't print the second side on this, but matter so what i do is i get because the the sheets that i'm going to use are a little bit smaller than a4 so it doesn't matter about the end um having something on it so i take a little i take my glue stick and i do a little just a little bit at the end and then i take the sheet it works with this one or it works with that that's got a bit of gunge on it so we won't bother with that sheet and because i want to make sure that i'm printing on the white side i just stick it down on top of the glue stick 
like so. So that's now stuck on and that's enough to feed it through the printer on my printer. If it doesn't work on yours, then I don't know, maybe put a few more bits. But I found that just putting it on the end was enough. My printer prints, goes through and prints on the underside. So that'll get fed through the printer that way. Make sure the, the glued edge is the bit that's coming through. And then that's enough to drag it through and print. So I'm gonna go off now and print all of these, um, print some documents on each of these style of paper so you can see what they look like. Okay, so I've been to the printer. So this, I've sort of laid them in order of what I've done. So this is the layout paper and it feels kind of receipt-like. I had misprinted on the back, but it doesn't matter. And you can see, you can see a little bit through, which I really like. Then we've got this drafts, draftsman paper. So I printed on the white side. Remember it was white on one side. So I printed on that side and then it's like this pinky on the other and you can you can see through it the if you compare it to that it's it's really similar in the way you can see through it so these really do feel like the same like the same paper it's just it's pink on the back really thought that this pink on the back would go really well with that so that's that paper and then I used the really thin tracing paper. So this was the 50 GSM tracing paper. So it's really thin. And I thought these might make cool bits of ephemera or it could just be in a book, in a journal. And it's just sort of interesting. So I did that. And then we did the parchment paper and I chose this document to do the parchment paper in because of the colour of it I thought it was very similar and it's very old so I thought although I don't think this document was on parchment paper but it could have been because it's so stunning obviously it's parchment on the back but I thought that that would be nice you could either pop this in a pocket or have it as a, a smaller page or trim it down. We're going to do that afterwards. And then this is the thicker tracing paper, the one that had this in it. It is, it is um, much, much um, thicker, this. You can sort of see, you can sort of see the lines through it. See it better on a white sheet, maybe, Jess. Try, try it on that there I think you can see a little bit better on there there is a little bit of the lines through it kind of makes it look like it's a little bit watercolored there um, quite like that so my quick tip was about using different paper and making it look a little bit more authentic obviously some of these aren't going to look necessarily authentic because we don't have them printed on that but this is just a another another way so with these on the thinner paper what i would do is take take my ruler i like a ruler rip and i'm just gonna rip along the line keep it straight that doesn't look straight there we go Oh, this one, um, I hadn't put the glue right up to the corner, so it had folded over like that when I was was printing it, so we've lost a bit. But I don't mind, because I've just ripped that corner bit off. I mean, I did toy with the idea of um, sticking that down, but I'm not.
and then I'm just going to rip up that corner because over the years you might have had a rip. Okay, so they are all, all done. Um, now, what I wanted to do was imagine that we had a journal um, and she's like crazily looking around for a piece of paper. So oh, that's one of my journaling pages from the kit in half. So that would be quite an interesting little little page that you might have in in your journal the uh, little feature like that or they could be um, used in a different way obviously <laughs> God, just, just talk about stating the obvious um, again that could be a nice little interesting um, page in a journal um, but I also thought you could make maybe a um, a little a little bag out of that was was something that I was was thinking um, might be might be nice um, but what I want to do is make these look a little bit more like real receipts and we'll deal with, deal with these later so first thing you need to do, obvs, because that's how we roll, is give it a little ink. So I'm going to get some vintage photo. So the edges need inking. Now I did clean these documents up. Some of them do have little remnants of creases in them and I can see one in this because I didn't want to clean them so that they looked brand new but I did make the edges all all quite sharp so if we look at this one there's a little bit of a crease going on here so I'm going to Ignore the fact that I've got a misprint there. So I'm going to just put that back in and then we'll ink up where, where that fold was. And I like to do it on the back as well. So not as sharp on the back because I kind of think it would be, if it was folded, the dirt would be there but on the inside it might be a little bit um, distributed differently now i'm just trying to see if i can see where the crease is um elsewhere it might have just might have just been that or you might have so if i was going to put this in a pocket fold it across there so again i'll put a little crease across there And a little bit more subtle on on the back and then I like to give it a little crinkle so because it would be a little bit a little bit rumpled so then kind of gently 
go over some of these raised bits. Pick up some of the bits that you can see. If it had been scrunched up and like thrown down, it'd be like I'm not paying that. Or a satisfied crumpled up and thrown down because you have paid it. And then go over the back. So then when you fold it out again, you can see those random, random marks there. that I think is quite cool and then ignore that and then I'm going to take my blending brush and let's have a little little bit more brown on the back to make the paper look a bit old and in the process of doing this you do sometimes get a little bit more creasing which is all good. More free We like that. And then what you're left with is something that looks a little bit aged. Much different to that which I've done nothing with. And we've got a little bit of aging on, on the back. So that is that is, you know, what I what I do with that. Now you could let's take this one because that's a different paper. Um, you can see the creasing in this down there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fold it down there where I can see the crease was, and it looks like there was a bit of a crease there as well and going down there looks like there might be a bit of a crease and it looks like there was a crease there. So we're just going to put them in. And then before I ink any further, I'm going to sort of maybe rough up the, the edges a little bit. So you can get little tools, and I do have one, but I don't know where it is. So you can just take scissors and go along the edges. And sometimes you might get a little bit of a rip in them, which is which is all good because receipts might naturally get old and dog-eared around the edge. This paper is particularly thin for this. So if you're using slightly thicker paper, you might not get quite so many rips. And if we go around this edge bit, So, so now we'll ink up these edges a bit more.
So that is that one now looking really old with the with the edging done like that. And the back a bit like that. And I don't need to do anything else to the back because it's already got this great colour on it. So that's the draft paper and that's the, the layout paper and they both have a similar sort of look and feel. I'll, I'll leave those ones because you don't need to do that. So here I can see a line down here and a line down here. So I think that's how this will have been folded up. So. do that and then let's do that there and that's it I can't see one going going that way so that would fit in a fit in a pocket or a tuck um, in the journal quite nicely so we'll think around this So that's already looking so much, so much older doing doing that with it. Um, now, the other thing I do is I sometimes I'll stamp on it. So I've got lots of um, dotty stamps um, that, that kind of look like that patination that you get in um, old, old, you know, documents and old books. And um, and I've, I've got like a coffee cup stain and, and, and different things like that. So I'm going to grab a few of those and then we'll do some stamping on these. So I've got lots of texture stamps. These are all stamping up stamps because I used to be a stamping up demonstrator and I've got loads. I got this one just before I um, resigned. Uh, I didn't resign. I've just dropped. Um, and uh, yeah, and I like them. So we've got sort of ink splodges there and we've got some interesting marks here which I thought adds lovely texture and kind of makes things look old. In this one I've got another different shape of a, an ink splot because I don't want the same pattern of ink splots going going on. Um, this one we've got lots of dots on here. I've got loads of others but they're not accessible right now. Little spatter of dots there and the uh, the, the coffee mug there and another splatter there so um i'm gonna get them mounted up and um and then we'll get stamping okay so i've got them all mounted now for the ink splatters um i think i'm going to use pebble path because it's kind of like it's kind of like this color so it's not a real dark br black it's what i call vintage black and then i'm going to use soft suede for like the age the age spots i think i think that's that's what i'm where i'm gonna go um with this so let's put a few splatters which is <laughs> it's a bit funny because i've spent time in photoshop cleaning ink, ink splatters and here i am putting some back um so I say I like having um a choice of splatters because um it looks a little bit artificial if you use the same stamp everywhere because if you splatter ink it's not gonna fall in the same In the same way yeah. so that will that will do on that one and then I'm going to come in with some dotage I 
done now. Get a little, little bit of paper to go underneath there. So I'm probably going to go off the edge there. Do a little, just a little bit up there and up there, down there. And you can go over the back as well. So I've got this, let me stamp it off there to have a look. Yeah, quite like that. So we can give different, different effects. With, with that one. And it just, I just think it's, it's quite cool. Um, we could put a little edge of a coffee cup there. So bring this in, we'll have another coffee cup, tea cup there. And let's put some some of these well well lucky that one right on this one and that that so so now they do look a lot older we can get our bone folder and give that a bit of a crease up so that's now ready to pop in a pocket and then you can journal on the back and that looks and feels a lot older i'm not doing too much of the creasing on this because parchment doesn't tend to have those those bits of creasing we've got that now with all those stamping it um, sort of adds a little bit extra to it and you can fold it up and then that pops nicely in in a pocket it looks nice you put a tag in front and that will look lovely same same with this one that tucked quite nicely you could have it tucked tucked over a page so that was the edge edge of a page you could put it over like that so you've got it on both sides with the paper clip and you could even tuck something underneath it a tag or something like so so that's that bit and then I was thinking that this might make quite a nice little um, bag so let's put it so that the top comes up the top a little bit. So we'll fold it along there, like so. And then we might go just fold, fold the side in a little bit. Maybe not the straightest fold there, Jess. What we're going to do here is just cut diagonally 
along there where that fold is. be fine I might do this with them together I think that'll be a bit better Put that up there Mike so so now we just want to take these bits off so I'm going to fold these in give them a bit of a crease Probably could be straighter, but it's absolutely fine. And then we're going to come in here and just slice that down. done that I can now finish it off a little bit better with my scissors Just um, glue these bits down, and I might use something that I don't use very often. Is I might use a tape pen because I think it will disappear easier. Um, with it being vellum so right up the outside there right up the inside there we go I'm going to actually before I stick it down I'm just going to snip this down a bit on both sides Got a little bit here to trim. And then that's a nice little pocket. I'll just can anybody spot my little rookie mistake? really should have inked that bit before I stuck it down but don't matter I've managed it so now we've got a nice little pocket now that could be that could just be clipped to a page or it could be stuck down but I quite like it as a floating 
floaty little pocket and I like the fact that you can, you can see in it and then you could whatever you stick in it you're gonna see through it a little bit I love it I love it so that's an idea to do with the vellum ones and then we've got these ones which I say if you just fold them in half they can just be just be a really nice little page that that you add I would ink round it just because I am an inker and I like to ink And if I try and do a project with no inking, I end up inking. I was watching Tracy Fox the other day and she made so much. I'm not going to ink. And then she just went, oh, I just have to. Can't help myself. And I'm like, yep, I'm right with you. So that's that. And then we've, then we've got this one. And you can do the same with that. Or it might be quite a nice little, just a little flip. That just flips up on a page. That was the wrong way around. There we go. So I'm thinking I might do something with um, Rachel's um, blue shabby things, and I think that would be quite quite nice as a little flip on one of the blue on one of the blue backgrounds. So that is just a few little ideas of using. The documents in my document kit and ways of making them look like genuine old documents so hope that was useful and i will be bringing you something else using this kit um very very soon as well okay bye for now